guys. Hi. You're listening to Not As We Planned. So get ready for honest, raw, unfiltered, unhinged story. Where we share our advice, opinion, and talk about all the shit that people avoid discussing. We want to point out we are not qualified professionals, although I feel like I am one. And what we say is the advice we would give to our besties. In. Hello guys and welcome back to another episode. I'm loving our like autumnal... It's autumn now guys, summer's over. I also feel like we're pretty much an advert for Adnola. No, so they're not sponsoring us, why? I know, I mean I've got the socks, we've got the... It's just so comfy, I literally live in their stuff, I could just keep ordering, they keep Sad. dropping, I'm like... Also, it's it's which, like, everything I want is sold out. What do you want? I want the powder blue track. Suit. Yeah, that's sold out. It's coming this week. Is it? Back, yeah. Um, I want the um knitwear. Do you like you're the gonna, brown? Did you get it? Oh, I've been the brown. It's good. I got. Did you have it? I've got that, and I ordered the this knit. Oh, uh, Ada. Yeah. Yeah, hoodie or sweatshirt. Sweatshirt. I prefer the sweatshirts than the knitted hoodie. I just don't. Yeah, I, I, I want the look. I want the. So you got the, the brown and the burgundy. Maybe. If you, you know what I've done on what's I am going to keep them oh, medium. I get them over. I get them medium. Yeah, I um I had a big clear out of my wardrobe. You know, what I, I like. I was looking at. It, I'm like, I haven't worn that in years. Why is it sitting here? It's annoying me. I, I get worried that because you know, like things come back in. No, but I've been ruthless, and I want it to be more not capsule because that's just not me. But um, yeah, I've just had a massive clear out, and it feels really good. So I'm going to do that each week and do one day where I clear a bit of like not put too much pressure, a bit of clothes, sort it out. I desperately need to sort out my wardrobe because I actually don't have room for anything. No, I know it's bad. It's- I know. But I, so, I've so really, I've got this, I know. There's such nice clothes coming out. It's just like, uh, I know. Right. I love winter. I Can love we do winter. Little catch up? Yeah, let's do a little catch up. And why don't we really not? I mean, I can report. Oh, I thought. Oh, I don't. Actually, I do have something that is quite big. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to talk about it on here. I'm going to talk about it on Patreon okay. just because. So at the weekend, I met her. Um, yeah, no, no, no. And it wasn't something like it was sprung upon me. Um, and yeah, and like very quick take a moment to say how proud I am of you. Oh, do you really? I feel like I'm going to get emotional. Can you believe how I handled it? What? Oh, I I oh my God. I can't really are. I don't make me cry. Oh, uh, he's been a... it so well. <laughs> Why the fuck am I crying? Oh my I'm... Thank you been with me on my whole journey. Like you know how hard this was always like one of my worst things. Oh my god! <laughs> the fight. <laughs> you the oh ice queen is broken. <laughs> In actual like she's serious. Maybe she is really proud of me. Yeah, I'm like you handled it. So yeah, I know I did. I didn't have a oh, choice. Sorry, do I need to go and get a fucking picture? Yeah, Jesus, cooking with your therapist tonight, Tash. <laughs> fucking hell. And then she came out like, <laughs> oh my god, why am I wearing a jumper? I'm so hot. So, oh, I've only got a small bit behind me. Such a good <laughs> but yeah, I, I'll, I'll speak about it more on Patreon because obviously I'm just mindful of, I want, I want to make sure I articulate it respectfully. Um, I won't lie, it has been something that I have been dreading, I'll be honest. And I did it. And do you know what? And that's one thing I will say on here. I feel really proud of the way I've handled it. Um, Clearly, I do. I'll go into a little bit more detail about that on Patreon. Um, but I actually think meeting her offered me clarity on quite a few things. And yeah, I'm, I, I also feel like some of the stuff I was dreading, I've now done. Do you know what I mean? Like, that was something I've been literally has been making me but slightly that on my own. We've said that a lot that you like the build up and the anticipation of something tends to be a lot worse than the actual. So thing. Me, when I was driving there, I actually thought I was having a heart attack. Did you like feel like you're going to throw up? Yeah. No, but we've but, always said that, haven't we? The thought of it always ends up I, being worse. So it's, try not to. Well, I know it's so easy to say, don't worry twice. So just. So someone sent me a really good post by Dr. Alex and it was basically saying, and I felt like his post spoke to me. I'll post up my stories at some point, but it was basically saying how if you're a worrier, 
and you end up worrying and like ruminating about something that's going to happen. Like you can, you like play out the thing in your head and like how it might go. Yeah. But then you end up worrying about it twice and you end up worrying about a situation that 90% of the time doesn't actually happen. Mm -hmm. And then so you've ended up using that energy in a really negative way, getting you in a bad headspace. I guess that's anxiety. It is. And also that a lot of the time that worry you had actually pans out in a much more positive way and that's how I really felt so I'll, I'll, I'll share the story because it was just a really he just articulated it a hell of a lot better than I just did <laughs> but um really interesting so yeah I just feel I kind of just feel like I don't know like I look back I think god if I was like put in that situation a year ago I think I'm I might have ended up like attacking no but yeah, I think it would have been unpleasant yeah it, and i don't think i would have been in the right headspace for it um but yeah i think it just it's settled my mind with a lot of things um i feel a lot better about it and now that's another thing ticked and if i have to see her again i see her again i've done it and i think i'm really proud of how i've kind of like held myself mm -hmm. And yeah, I'll go into a bit more detail on Patreon. So that was something massive for me this way. Um, so yeah, other than that, I had a really nice weekend with the kids. Do you know what? I felt like the last week of holidays, they'd obviously been away with their dad and his girlfriend for like five days in Cornwall. And they came back and they were really unsettled out of routine. Like they are clingy boys, but like, like you know, when it's almost like too much. Yeah really hard work they weren't sleeping they were just fighting constantly and I remember just feeling like a really rubbish mum and thinking thank god like I thought they'd be silly but like on their best behavior to because they were so happy to see me and I feel like now we're settling back into routine like this last week I said last night on the phone to my boyfriend like I've really enjoyed being their mum this week they're just don't get me wrong Theo sleep's been all over the place but I'm, their behavior in general has settled down they're really starting to, I don't know, be helpful around the house again. And I guess it's that lack of routine sometimes. Oh, I also think that when they have been away from you, because I, th I find behaviours are always worse mm. after a week having yeah. a dad. And it um, is kind of like maybe slight, not resentment, because I, I, they're, they're children and they don't hold that sort of like no anger or hate. But like, you know... They haven't been with you, so then they let all their emotions out on you. Yeah, 100%. So it, I think it's quite normal. I've had CO literally waking up like every half an hour, checking I'm there. Like, it's, it's like, a like, eye separation anxiety, but like awfully, like he literally wanted to like sleep on top of me. Um, so that's been quite hard. It's, it's just quite hard to navigate. When you, when you were so exhausted, like I literally felt like he was a newborn, and I was just like, yeah, "I really get it." I've just put a gate on Rome's door, okay? Because a lot he thinks he thinks it's necessary. Unless you and coming, but, but Rome's much older. When's he for? It's Feb. Oh uh, yeah, he's a year old. So my yeah, he is a year old. So um, I held, I kept him in a yeah as I possibly could. Yeah, he kept fucking climbing out, and I was like, "Let's cover that," which I'm so bizarre. But one thing we have done this week: I've done potty training. Oh, amazing. Uh, and he's got it. And I just want to talk about like how hard this is when you're co-parenting. Yeah. And um, hard to stick to the same thing and routine. Or like you have this expectation it might not be like, so he's had poos on potty in my house down for a couple of weeks. And then he went away with his dad and he just did it in a nappy. And then, so I felt like he'd come back and all that hard work. I was like... I was like, well, now we're here. We're not, we're not, we're, we're not doing poos and nappies. And then... I just decided, I was like, he's so ready for it. And I've, I found it hard because with Theo, I did it over the summer when we had a, a long period at home and he didn't wear any clothes and he nailed it, like absolutely smashed it. But I've also felt like I didn't want to do it over the summer because on my periods I had with the kids, I wanted to do so much stuff because I knew I had time away from the kids. So I didn't want to use the time I had with them potty training and staying at home. So I, I've been in this really conflicted space as when to do it. Yeah. And then like at the same time, I'm like, oh, but if I do wait till September, then he's got nursery two days a week. And I, I don't know. I've just been like, ah, oh, like when do you do it anyway? On Tuesday this week, I just, I just decided to do it. I was like, screw it. We're going to do it. Pants off, naked. And he's absolutely smashed it. He's had a couple of accidents, but... 
Amazing. He's amazing. So I've just texted his dad and said, he doesn't wear nappies anymore. Can you get him some pants? And like, it's really important that that's consistent because, yeah, I, I think that's the thing. I think with co-parenting, I have seen that kind of struggle, whether it's potty training or other things where there isn't that consistency. And oh, it is sometimes really frustrating when you're doing something very much like Rome with his sleep. When he comes into my room, I put him straight back and I have a feeling that may not be what is yeah. done. Yeah. Uh, dad so then it just disrupts what you're trying to do but again I think it's only so much yeah. you can get frustrated about you've got to establish you're not con- yeah and you've got to establish well this is what happens at mummy's yeah. house and that's where I've really started to do things because I do think as they get older they start to be like well at daddy's we do this I'm like my, well at mummy's we do this my kids do that all the time actually mine don't do it yeah mine, mine, I think mine are just slightly I, I too say, well you can do that as I do slightly too young yeah um, like I, I might sound like a strict parent. I don't allow the TV on every day in my house. I and yeah. but I've noticed such a difference in my kids since I've I've had that role. Like they yeah. play so much better. Like Milo's imaginative play blows my mind, and I think it's really easy sometimes to do that. But I'm like, don't play. You've got toys, and they've been so much better at that. So because I do notice a deterioration in their behaviour when they're watching too much TV. So yeah, I think it's really important to hold your boundaries with how you want to parent. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. What's your catch up? I don't know. What what have I been doing? Yeah, she needs to catch up with What the fuck is going on with your life? <laughs> what have I been doing? I don't really have any, anything to, to up to. I think you're lying. <laughs> no, nothing. Like, the kids have like, gone back to school. Like, it's really annoying. Rome isn't properly going to be in nursery fully until the 16th of September. I know. Oh, that's like two, two weeks. weeks. So that's a bit annoying. I'm excited to fully get back into a routine, get him into school. And yeah, I'm just sort of doing my own thing. Anyway, should we delve in some emails? Let's do that. I thought we are nitpick too much, right? Fuck body help. Help. Let's get straight in. Hi, ladies. Here's a little update on my situationship since June. I really appreciate your advice and I've listened to to that oh so we must have given advice oh okay fine I can't remember oh, he is. oh yeah so she has forwarded it it's the neighbour who comes over there I while remember. sex and he leaves 20-30 minutes later I wonder if it was a patron or normal I can't remember I remember she was ca- starting to catch feelings, feelings and I actually think that he went a bit cold and she was worried that he was sleeping with someone else and we said, like, if you know that he's not your person, maybe it's best just to, like, call it a day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that, and she's a mum, and, like, he'd given her really good, like, mo- like cordy uh, positivity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Oh, I love I'm it. excited. We love updates, guys, as well. It's really helpful if you, like, forward it, it from the other email. Yeah, anyone listening that has sent us an email before, even if we shared it back in, like, a year ago, send us an update. We do so love it. And we remember that. Yeah, we do. How good are we? <laughs> Such a memory. Um, uh, I've listened to that episode numerous times since you helped me when I've been having the odd low moment. Well, the fuck buddy continued for quite a while longer and I hope my update will help any other women out there who, just like Tash has explained to us all, need to focus on the inner work on yourself rather than telling you into anything you're not ready for. <laughs> Who is this girl giving all this fucking advice? Are you hearing this? <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> uh, Since I last wrote in, the 50-year-old and I continued seeing each other regularly for daytime and nighttime hookups. The sex was amazing. And to be honest, a little too intoxicating, which I think is why I struggled to cut it off. Things escalated over the weeks as we got into the summer holidays. He has kids too, so he ha- and he had them half the time. And before I knew it, we were speaking daily, sending good morning texts and, and the like, and I could feel myself getting more pulled in. I felt myself thinking about what else could happen with this guy, even though I knew to my core he was the wrong fit, and I'd be trying to fit a round peg into a square hole. I could sense I was becoming quite limerent over him, even though... Every single thing about him and the situation screamed, run away. Then, because of a clash of holidays, we didn't see each other for a couple of weeks. But eventually he came over on an evening and it was honestly the wildest sex I've ever had. 
ticks every single box and a night I'll always remember. Ooh. Ooh, 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 detail. <laughs> Heavy too. <laughs> we fulfilled a lot of each other's fantasies and I enjoyed every minute of it. Is she not telling us what the fantasies but, are? Guys, don't, why are you holding back? Babe, I want say fantasies. <laughs> Are you using our Excel spreadsheet? Maybe. <laughs> I know I am. I'm joking. <laughs> he stayed and chatted for a while after, and he just started to sink in for me how self-absorbed he is. I had a realisation throughout the last three months. He's only asked me about five questions about me and everything. Our hookups, conversations, all contact was centred around him. Wow. Wow. He must be really good in bed for you to like yeah. be blind. Yeah, 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 yeah. He called all the shots and I'd put myself in a position of being completely out of control. I also realised he's just as damaged as the rest of us. His failed marriage has caused some trauma and we've just picked completely different paths to deal with it. As soon as he left, I knew I needed to end things. I knew he couldn't give me what I wanted and that each hookup now was just creating anxiety in me. We had rough plans to see each other after the last time. However, things cooled off completely between us now, which felt mutual. I obviously have no idea what his thoughts are. Did he do all the sexual things he wanted and then felt done? Had he met someone else? Who knows? But I truly feel like he's done me a favour by reducing contact and I'm really grateful things have ended peacefully, seeing that I will likely see him over the years. Although, because we live so close, I pass his car all the bloody time and it's so annoying. Don't shit where you eat, ladies. The moral of the story here is you really have to focus on yourself. As my best friend has always said, casual sex feeds the body but starves the soul. I've had to look deep inside as to why this person had such an impact on me when I knew from the beginning he wasn't the right fit. I now know it comes down to finally being ready for the next relationship after my painful divorce. I spent five years telling myself I wasn't ready to be vulnerable and I didn't want more from anyone, but this situation has brought out what I do want, what I have capacity for and what I need from a partner. I have no regrets. I've continued on my healthy journey and I've now lost three stone in a year. Amazing. Wow. Regularly go to the gym and physically feel a million dollars. I still have a little way to go mentally as I'm still feeling quite blue about the whole thing, but I know I'll get there and the feelings will pass eventually. I'm having a dating break for a while to focus on me, my kids and my life. And I'm now so excited for what's to come and what I have to offer someone. Spring, summer 2024 will always be known as the season I discovered myself and the season I was fucking my ex's neighbour, which gives me a slightly twisted joy. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing. I'm now a Patreon member and absorbed with those extra episodes like an addict on crack. I love it. Do you know what? Like you are doing so well. You should be so proud of yourself. Like... We've said it before, whether it's a situationship, whether it's a marriage, like, I do think that you've got to do it in your own time rather than just listening to what other people say because it is at the end of the day what you are. You're you're the only one that knows how you feel, that you're living it. I think it's really good that you never stopped being aware of the problems. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think it becomes dangerous when you stop actually yeah i feel like you've always been on quite high alert and wary of yeah. what the situation is yeah not think, romanticized it i think yeah i think it's when you start like kidding yourself and hiding information from, from other, other people. people and things like that that's where it starts to get like dangerous territory mm -hmm. and look like like you said you've actually learned from it you don't regret it like it's actually shown you what you feel like you are able to offer in another relationship. And it sounds like in the meantime, you had a fucking lot of fun. So thank you for updating. Yeah, I love that update. Yeah. This one is called Desperate. Help, please. Hi, girls. Firstly, thank you for everything. You've helped me more than you'll ever know, but I need your help, please. Please, please help me. In capitals, I'm so desperate. Keep me anonymous. Call me anything. Okay, Jan. Yes, I have no idea what that is. My mum had a freak book going. Really? I'm currently in the process of divorcing my narcissistic, gaslighting, controlling ex. It's been the worst and best year of my life. Best because I finally filed for divorce last year, but worse because he's driving me to breaking point. Quick backstory. Married 13 years, two kids, red flags from the start, typical case of love bombing, expensive restaurants, five-star holidays, jewellery, etc. And I fell for it. 
I gave up my successful career to look after our kids so he could further his. At the start, I didn't recognize the signs or maybe I just chose to ignore them. From 2016, I started keeping evidence and writing notes of things he did as though I was going mad. I thought I was losing my mind. Fast forward to the present and the divorce. I can't cope. I've lost my strength and the ability to see the wood from the trees. He has pushed me to rock bottom with thoughts I never want to have again. After having been my children's primary carer since they were born, he suddenly made allegations he has serious safeguarding concerns. Social services found the allegations to be false, but for him to cross that line has pushed me over the edge. That's just disgusting. Yeah, I don't understand. A positive is that social services have identified my kid need help for domestic abuse from their father. I mean, ha, huh, karma. Like, what a prick. So hopefully they will get help where they deserve. The police are also involved with interviewing him for coercive and controlling behaviour towards me. He's threatened to kill me, cancelled my credit cards, deducted money. The list goes on and on and on. Once resulted in social services giving me food bank vouchers. Sadly, my father has also passed away this year and I haven't had time to grieve. Court date's looming. I can't sleep. I can't eat. My head is like a merry-go-round and I don't know how to make it stop. I know there is light at the end of the tunnel, which is how I'm still alive. I know one day me and my beautiful children will be okay, but how do I get there? How do I even start to heal? How do I become the best mum in the world? How do I find out who I am again? How do I stop crying? I'm just so desperate for some advice and help. I love you girls, as you know. Do you know what? I think you're doing all the right things and I know that's not easy to hear because I know you're hoping we're going to give you some words of wisdom that's going to magically help. But you've got, rightly so, the police involved, you know, the social services are involved. Those are the people who can do the stuff that needs to happen. And I think actually when the court date comes and your divorce starts to move forwards in that sense... I think that will offer you some relief. I think sometimes it is the fear of the unknown. It's having, like we spoke about, having that stress and worry about what if this happens? What if this mm-hmm. happens? You know, what if my he gets the kids 50%? By the sounds of it, it doesn't sound like that's going to Yeah, I think it, and this is a very much like day by day. You can't yeah. think further than the day that you're currently living. The fact that you've got authorities involved that are on your side you need to try and just constantly remind yourself of what a positive that is. Mm. If we were reading that and it turned out that he was able to manipulate them and you were like, he's giving them untrue stories and they're believing it, this would be a very different story. You have them on your side. In terms of healing, I think for you to move forward, you do need some like answers in terms of, it's the uncertainty, isn't it? It's that anxiety and uncertainty of what's going to happen. I think when you're given that, again, it is taking it step by step I don't know if you speak to anyone I don't know if you journal or anything but getting feelings out and also knowing like how you're feeling now and all the worry is totally valid and I'm sorry if that's not helpful but you said like how do I be the best mum it sounds like you are like Mm -hmm. you know you're sitting there you're worried you're like the feelings that you're having right now and the concerns that you have is because you're so worried about you and your children it's not a bad thing for your children to experience what real human emotions are it's okay for them to see you sad it's okay for them to see you stressed i think the fact we need to normalize some of these emotions that are considered more negative i think if we normalize them for our children and know actually it's okay and it's very human to feel like these things that in turn is being a good mom to your children because you're teaching them these are normal human human emotions. Everyone experiences them at some point. And it's, you know, talking about it, recognizing it. And I think that's okay. I think it's okay to feel. And I think it's okay for children to see that. I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves as parents that our children need to see us happy and positive mm-hmm. all the time. And that's not the case. I think when we start to be realistic and show children it's okay to be sad, it's okay to be angry, it's okay to get things wrong and it's how we go about dealing with that, I think that's where the magic of parenting really happens. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think that it sounds like you are doing the right things. Look, what you have been through is not for the faint-hearted. Like, give yourself some credit. Like, you've been dragged through some really, really hard times. But the fact that you're going through that divorce and eventually 
there'll be a finish line. Yeah, like there is a light at the end of the tunnel, which I know that you're aware of and it's hard getting there. You've got to, unfortunately, we can't give you this like magic cure that's going to, yeah, that's going to make you feel better. You've got to go through those emotions. You've got to feel the feels. But it is about maybe like seeking therapy, seeing your friends, keeping yourself busy when you right. can. Journal. Journal. I really yeah. found that helped me. Yeah, no same. But thank you for writing in. And obviously like, our inbox is always open if you want to reach out. So yeah, we hope that you're okay. You're doing really well. Two women pregnant is the title. Hey, I'll try and cut along the story short. I've been dating for about six years on and off. And back in January, I had the best date with this guy. We had the best fun dates and he was very charming and made me feel very special. And then a couple of days before Valentine's Day, he messaged me out of the blue asking how I felt it was going. Why do people do this on text? Like, it blows my mind you'd have like a big conversation like this. Just like that, That's just a lack of um, communicate like they Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just on that, I just thought I touched on something that like I've started doing in a new relationship. Mm-hmm. Again, it just, just made me think of it because I feel like when you've been in a marriage that's failed or a relationship that's failed, it's so important to look back and reflect and try and make sure the same mistakes don't get made again or the same lack of care. So we keep doing like, and it's not like a formal thing, but just like, a casual relationship check-in, like, are you getting everything you need? Like, mm. is there something I could do that might make you feel safer and stuff like that? It's just been so nice to have, like, really honest conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't know, I just feel like I'm really reflecting <laughs> in this relationship. I'm very aware of, like, when I might feel a little more anxious or when I might need a little bit more, I don't know, words of affirmation or I'm just really starting to notice patterns and things. And it's so nice and refreshing to be with someone who just constantly always says, like, what can I do to help? Mm-hmm. Or what do you need from me? And I, I don't know. I've, it's very alien. But, yeah, this made me think of that. Like, could we say it a billion times over, but communication is key. Key. Mm. I said it was good, but he said there were some red flags and he wasn't sure about the situation. Okay. Are you the red flag? Oh. Hi. There's some red flags in them. It's me. (laughs) Um, He couldn't give me any examples of why I was a red flag. God, do you know what? I massively relate to that. I remember my ex-husband always saying certain things like there's just things that just like aren't good or aren't sitting well with me and like things you do and I'm like, well, can you at least let me know what they are so I can make those changes and he could never give me any examples. I think they deflect, don't they, a lot on his ass. Yeah, of course. Next day, he says he made a mistake and that he got scared. His ex was crazy. That's a red flag. Yes. And it brought up old memories. So wanted to spend Valentine's with his friend. <laughs> Hold on. Because my ex is crazy, I'm going to spend Valentine's. Sorry, Valentine's is too triggering. So my ex is batshit crazy. Do you mind if I don't spend it with you? I spend it with my friend. <laughs> He also mentioned that he was having a tough time at work and he had a lot going on. Do you know what? I saw a funny reel and it was like, um, when you catch your man cheating and suddenly he's got past trauma about his grandma dying 15 years ago. (laughs) Uh, What was it? There's like a list of things, like he's having a hard time at work and suddenly out of nowhere. It was a tongue-in-cheek reel, but it did make me laugh. Um, He also mentioned he was having a tough time at work and he had a lot going on. We were exclusive quite early and I confirmed that he, and I confirmed that he was not seeing or speaking to anyone else the day after Valentine's Day when I saw him. My gut instinct was screaming at me that something wasn't quite right. But I ignored it and put it down to past bad experiences. Do you know what? It's really hard when you've had bad experiences to differentiate between is this a red flag or am I just like a paranoid bitch? Well, I understand that. It is I, really Do you know what? I understand both sides. So sometimes it's like, do I give them the benefit of the doubt? Am I overanalyzing and overthinking too much? And then the other side is, oh, you start like looking at all the good and you're like, no, 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 no. Like, let's give it, let's give yeah. the benefit of the doubt. Like, yeah, it is hard. It's so easy. I, Can I just say one thing and point something out? 
I understand it's very easy for us to give all this advice. And not take and it yourself. To give all this advice when we're not in any of these situations. Sorry, you're all right, hon. <laughs> Do you just hurt your neck? Or maybe I am relaxed. Middle aged. Salty. It's like a <laughs> salty middle aged bitter woman. I just like turn my head and it like cracking my neck. I told you I had a bad neck too. I do. Um Yeah, it's it's it is easy to ignore. It is. It's like I think with things like this, it's That's a big one though. Yeah, but I think I think as well, it's okay to like be paranoid if you've had a bad past but i think it's like over time when you just when they show and almost prove to you you can trust them like yeah that's when you have to realize you gotta let go of that yeah actually yeah and that's what i've realized like not gonna lie like going into my relationship i thought i was i was a paranoid psycho bitch from reflection like literally everything and particularly for me being having distance between us and not being together as much as we would like not being together and being apart made me more paranoid because obviously you have to trust someone. But so, him cancelling on Valentine's that that there's that's no a big valid. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Not valid at all. I be yeah. Fast forward end of March. I saw a used makeup remover wipes in his bin and I called him out. Oh, who uses makeup wipes? Yeah, are you not doing a double cleanse routine with like eight steps? <laughs> Use my link. <laughs> Skincare highlight. Um, he admitted he had been dating another girl at the same time as me for three months. Oh, <gasps> can you imagine? Oh, and they're like staying over in the same place. And like, that's just the Oh my God, filth. Ugh. Oh. It was her he was with on Valentine's Day too. So she's the chosen one. Yeah. He begged for me back and we said we would give it another go. It went well. I wasn't expecting that. No. We met each other's families. He spoiled me for my birthday and I thought it was going well. I then found out I was pregnant. I drove to his house to tell him, but he wasn't in. I rang him, but he got defensive over text said that I was stalking him like his ex and that I was crazy and ignored me all weekend. So I messaged him, telling him I was pregnant. He came over and we sorted it out. We booked a holiday for September, went for family parties and work award ceremonies. During the first three months, I was emotional and he would call me self-conscious and paranoid and accuse me of accusing him of things when I would ask where my toothbrush was. He's moving the toothbrush for his so other girlfriend. I see it. Oh, it's, it's hearing, like, when you hear, like, the gaslighting. It's making me a bit uneasy. He went away one weekend and I tried to call and he says I wasn't allowed to call. I felt so alone and vulnerable and couldn't believe he didn't want to support his pregnant girlfriend. On the day of the dating scan, he was off with me and didn't show any emotion. Later that day, he said, Oh no, what is that? I have to tell you something. Oh, you no. need to remain calm. The audacity. <laughs> I need to remain calm? What are you telling me? Oh my God, what's he telling her? He said that the weekend I drove to his house uninvited, he went for a walk with someone at work. Another one. And ended up sleeping with her. Oh, sorry. sorry. I don't mean to laugh. No, it wait. Just... She is also pregnant. With his baby. He said he didn't love me and doesn't want to be with me but I need to act like an adult and be civil for the sake of our baby. Oh, my God. My blood is boiling. Oh, I hope he listens. Do you know what's really funny? Can I just say something? You know the guy that emailed in yeah. that I called stupid and, yeah. and a loser? I listened back to just the snippet of us reading her email, and in it I put, I hope you're fucking listening. <laughs> <laughs> 
I hope he's fucking listening because I'll say something about you, mate. You sound like he's you're listening. no, you are a fucking piece of shit. Honestly, people who put around their penises in multiple vaginas, not worrying about feelings, not caring what happens, not taking any kind of responsibility are the worst kind of people. Honestly, these are feelings. These are future children as well who aren't going to, you know, I just think... How embarrassing for those kids. They're, they've they got a brother or a sister and then it's going to be like, oh, like how come you're the same age? Because my dad was fucking both of them at the same time. When I like, went on a walk with a work also, colleague and fell into a joy. Like, you were clearly being like a really bad human and you're gaslighting your girlfriend to make her feel like she's mental. She's not mental. She's just onto you. You're a pathetic waste of space. Right, sorry. I blocked him on everything, and a few days later, he turned up at my front door. Wanted oh, what? Sla- such a stalker. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're a psycho. Yeah. Wanted to discuss how he wants to be heavily involved in both babies' lives. He told me he slept with her again the night before, but he knows he needs to be single. Grow up. Oh my god, so they've both been ditched. Since he has been checking in, asking how I am, but I'm struggling because he didn't care when we were together. How do I get over the lies and how do I stop thinking about them two playing happy families with that baby? It's killing me and I miss him. I want him to be with me and have this baby together. Can I quickly ask you a question, okay? Because seriously, and I think we've said this before, what do you miss? Do you miss the anxious feeling that you get when he wasn't replying to your text? Do you miss the way that he made you feel like you were the one going crazy? Do you miss the fact that he was completely vacant at the scan of your baby? Do you miss the fact that you've had to find out and be told that you shouldn't react badly when he's been sleeping with someone else and made them pregnant? You are missing a person that doesn't exist. You've romanticized him in your head. I know that this is really harsh. It's just, he makes me so angry. It makes me sad for you that you were sitting there wanting him back he doesn't deserve either of you women he should be on his own like can i also just say you said like you hate the thought of them playing happy families let me tell you now when he has this baby babies don't make life easier or romantic or make it easy to be a happy family there's going to be sleep deprivation his girlfriend or whoever this person is is going to change when she's had a baby. She's going to have a postpartum body. What's he going to do? Go wander off and find something better again then? That's what I mean. There is no happy family. Like, again, it's this thought in our head, this is going to happen, this worry. Can I also say one thing? It's not a thing. Can I also say another thing? I don't even feel like she's the other woman. I feel like you both are. Like, how do you know? Like, she probably also feels the same way that you feel. She probably didn't know about you either. And I think that you've both been played off each other. Like... But he's not he's not gonna give her what you want either. Like I just think this man is not a nice person. Don't try and beat yourself up thinking, oh, the, the other one's got everything I want. I guarantee he's probably treating her just as bad. But what's he gonna do when times get hard, when you're exhausted, when you're running off zero, when your body doesn't look the same? Like, I don't trust this man. He can't stick with someone. Like so there was the other girl and then it was someone else from work. Like the man is clearly showing consistent behaviors of being an asshole and i think that i know you can't see it now and i know it is heartbreaking when the person that you love breaks your heart breaks your trust he's doing you a favor and one day you're going to look back and realize that not being with him is an absolute fucking blessing and let me tell you that baby has got everything they need in you and it's going to be hard and hopefully you've got people around you who can help but i promise you the best thing for your baby is you Mm -hmm. and you're going to do an amazing job right confession of the week i slept with my old music teacher after i'd finished school (laughs) if i slept with my music teacher you should have seen what he looked like mr hope he was not a looker yeah (laughs) No, it was fine. I wouldn't have slept with any of my old. I wouldn't have slept with any of my teachers. Mm-hmm. Primary school, however, not when I was in primary school, but looking back, the the PE teacher in my primary school, he was kind of right. Right. Affirmation of the Affirmation week. Affirmation of the week. I've got one. Okay. I think we need this today, guys. 
and this can be in regard to anything, but the way I'm thinking of it is like our abilities as mothers. Mm-hmm. Okay, is that I am doing my best, and that is all that matters. I mm-hmm. am, and, and that is however that looks. And I promise you, that is enough for your children. Yeah. Love it. Right. Thank you so much, guys. We hope you enjoyed Keep it. Keep writing in. We want loads more emails and confessions and, and updates. Update. And men emailing in. We always love to hear from those sexy beings. Yeah. Anyway, love you guys. Love. Bye. Bye.